Bugs Request. We're getting together tonight. And so y'all be sure and fill the bowl up. And from and the last two times that Bugs has been here, the gentleman that's up there right now, Brandon Aguilard, is up there. And I'm going to let Brandon uh, introduce the gentleman that's with him and be able to uh, take y'all on a little Bugs ride here. Brandon Aguilard, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, this is uh, Damon Thibodeau. He's plays in my little low. Yeah, give, please give him a hand. <laughs> Y'all may want to take that back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my little local band back home, he sings in that with me. And whenever I do this with Bugs, we've done it here a couple of times and a couple of other places. And uh, I asked Randy, he, it just turned into the little benefit deal. So I asked Randy, hey, is it okay if I still come? He's like, yeah, come on. Not to thinking about it, you know, it's... I haven't sang in a long time. I thought, you know, I, I couldn't get through these songs. I, even if I was up emotionally, I, I wouldn't be able to get So I have Damon here. He's, I think I sent you the songs Friday. Friday. <laughs> yeah. Never heard them before. And we listened to them in the car, so he should have them down. Yeah. Yeah. I expect yeah, nothing yeah. but perfection, you know. <laughs> Bugs always expected perfection out of everybody, so I mean, he's he has to have perfect. And he loved doing this because it's there was so many fine musicians that came up before us on the acoustic guitars, and we, me especially, but we were so out of our element in this deal. As guitar players, you know, if we're sucking, was like, okay, we'll just turn it up a little bit and hide behind the distortion. Well, this is you're naked. I mean. <laughs> warts and all you this is if we screw up we screw up and uh some of these songs tonight we've played before some of them i haven't played just, there's a couple of them that i like so we threw in here damon's never played any of these i do not play guitar yeah he doesn't play guitar <laughs> i had to give him a quick lesson for this this week and another reason that bugs like this so much and buddy and rose got into this just a tad is not so much for the the play i mean the guitar player and i don't know how many i know there's a few guitar players in here and i've seen a lot of guitar players it's he, to me he, and there is no best i mean everybody different styles different things jazz players you know can they play rock well and can a rock guy play country you know there, there's no best but he, he was the best i've ever seen so but he liked this because you know, he's a guitar player, but he ended up being just a great singer and a great songwriter. Um, in his early days, he was wrote those instrumentals that were just amazing. And we'll do one or two here. And then he got it into the lyrical side. And it, you can track his life by the content of the songs. And he, he liked it. He enjoyed showing off his songwriting thing. But... What I think he liked most of all was the storytelling. The, I mean, and they, they can vouch for me, and me and Wendy, who's been around them for 15 years, the dude had professional stand-up comic timing. Yeah. I mean, he, he, a lot of people are funny guys. He walked around with material. I mean, he, he had a joke for everything. So if y'all don't mind, it might just be more storytelling than music. Just we'll tell stories about a song because that's what he would do if he was here. You know, he wrote songs in a band context. And we'll write these songs. We're going to get out there. We're going to play them. We're going to sound great. And they do. But and they kind of sound odd in a singer songwriter type situation, with, which is what this is. So I'm going to try to attempt to play some solos with, you know, the bottom dropping out of it. Plus, I'm trying to play Bugs Henderson songs, you know. It's, <laughs> as a guitar player, there's nothing scarier. And I've, for those of you that don't know, I've probably been in the band the last three and a half years or so. It, as a second guitar player for, I don't know why, I just weaseled my way in there somehow. <laughs> a lot of pleading and begging and crying. But he's been courteous enough to let me get up. It changed my life. It really has. And like I said, I've have Damon help me sing because I don't think I could get to the songs emotionally. But I got to thinking, well, I don't know if I'd be able to get to the stories either or the playing, especially with his kids sitting staring at me right here. <laughs> 
you know, for, from a guitar player's standpoint, it's it's music's not a competition. Everyone says that. That's bull crap. It's a competition. You're up there. Am I better than that guy? Who that guy's good. That kind of thing. So, and when you're playing with bugs, especially before my time in the '60s and the '70s on into '80s, he was the head cutter. People would try to get up on stage and outshine them, and it wasn't happening. So for me, I mean, I, I really haven't been playing guitar that long. I didn't start playing until I was 21, and I'm only 22. 22. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 38, so I haven't been playing that long. So for me to be on stage with Bugs all those nights, uh, I've gotten to where it doesn't scare me. Another guitar player, who's coming up? Paul Reed Smith, great. Who's a Ted Nugent? Come on, I, I don't care. But what scares me is his kids watching me. Because <laughs> you guys, y'all have heard of Bugs, probably seen them a bunch of times. And Oh, I recognize that song. That's great. If I mess it up, which I will mess up, it, I, I might be, there might be some fumbles that I might not be able to recover from, but I can cover most of it, but they'll know. They've heard every leg. They've heard all this before. So I, we'll try to warm up with the song. This first song is, in <laughs> again, with the stories, if I get something wrong, y'all correct me. Uh, it's a little instrumental, and it's probably the hardest one that we're going to do tonight, so I want to get that out the way. And like I said, I will mess this up. How would I put this? How would he say it? He had a, he's a big sports fan huge sports fan and i couldn't care less about sports so whenever i first come on a few years ago and i'm from louisiana we, we both are from lake charles louisiana it's when the saints were doing really well you know i think it was the same year that they went to, su to the super bowl is whenever i came on and he's of course a big cowboys fan and we'd go back and he would introduce me on stage unfortunately from louisiana the home of the New Orleans Saints, and I think the Saints might have beat the Cowboys. So we'd rib each other, and again, I couldn't care less. Well, he told this story about his first band was the Eminons. It was no name spelt backwards. And I think it was uh, Ricks and Tyler's when he was telling this story, and I'd never heard it before. And so he was telling, yeah, well, Eminons, the, the name, no name spelt backwards, and we'd wear these colors. These colors were black and gold so i walked over to him on stage hey that's the saints colors <laughs> and he gave me the you know the he gave me the look <laughs> it's, it's the eminon colors so he's a big cowboys fan so he uh, i think he had an in with the cowboys and he thought of this tune that to write for them to come out to you know when the they introduce the cowboys and have a little thing and they run through the deal onto the field they come out to this. So he wrote this, and the running joke was, since their record, he's since withdrawn the song, so I don't think it ever made it. <laughs> so we'll try it out. It's called the Big D Shuffle. Again, it's the hardest one that I'm going to do tonight, so I'm going to mess it up, so I'm going to get that out of the way.
The funny thing about that tune is the title of it, Big D Shuffle. I'm from Louisiana and somewhat naive. I was like, okay, Big D Shuffle. What is it? The song's in E. Why is it called the Big D Shuffle? <laughs> what, I mean, I, and then I was going to, I probably going to see him in Dallas one time, and a friend of mine said, oh, you're headed up to the Big D. That's the first, I don't even know if I told my wife that. That's the first time I've ever told that story. You're in Lake Charles. Yes, I'm in Lake Charles. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, Louisiana my whole life, and my experience, I mean, I'm, we're what, 20 miles from the Texas border? Yeah. 35 from the Texas border, but it's uh, South Texas, Beaumont. We're just right outside Beaumont and Houston. We're on that I-10 corridor. I didn't start going to Dallas until I started seeing bugs. The first time I've ever been to Dallas was Port David's Pub in Lower Greenville to see bugs. First time. And I was I was that guy. I would show up. If the doors opened at 7, I was there at 6. And just sitting there waiting. And everyone, they would open the doors, and I'd get to the seat right in front, and I would just... I just started playing guitar, and I was watching everything that he would do. I think I've told Patty this. I don't think I told Bugs. My lovely wife, Wendy, before we were married, I had a, another girlfriend that <laughs> apparently didn't work out. Well, uh, <laughs> it, no, it did not. <laughs> it, yes, there is. <laughs> Trust me, it was for the best. <laughs> when I would go see Bugs... She had a video camera that I would stick in her purse. When the set would start, I'd turn that video camera on through the whole show. And we would watch, and I'd watch his fingers. When I'd go home, I'd put that tape in, and I would listen to the show and start stealing licks. I stole licks. I stole songs. <laughs> from, And it was uh, the muddiest recording. I mean, it was stuffed in a purse. So it was not the the, best, the highest quality. It was not CD quality. But that's where I learned a lot of the licks from is live at Poor David's Pub from a VHS <laughs> video camera stuffed in a purse. I don't think I've ever told that story before either. <laughs> oh, here's one that was on his first album ever. Uh, at last, it was recorded live at the Armadillo. Armadillo, how do you say it in Texas? Armadillo. Armadillo, excuse me. Well, in, <laughs> in, in Louisiana, in Cajun country, he's Thibodeau. Wow. I'm Aguilard. It doesn't, and for Cajuns, like y'all care, but my last name is spelled A-G-U-I-L-L-A-R-D. The two L's are silent. So I tell everyone my name is Aguilard, but it's really Aguiad. There's no L. The, there's a name B-I-L-L-E-A-D-U-X or something. It, it looks like Billado. It's B-O. B-O. <laughs> B-O. That's Cajun stuff. So I, I, I look at it as Amadio. With the two L's, There's, but it's Armadillo. So it, it, it was recorded uh, live at the Armadillo. <laughs> Delo World Headquarters. And it's, he's, it's been on a couple live albums, and he's recut it again. And that's one of the deals with him. He would, even songs that he wrote, and I don't know for whatever reason, he may not be happy with it or may have a better idea with it. He would change it up. He, he, it was always different, always different. And the song that he did, he has one called Judy Likes the Blues on the Still Flying album. It's a slow country song. 
And it's great. Great. I mean, slow is steel guitar. Every it's a country song. And then they did it again on Daredevils, I think. And it's a little faster country song. Same lyrics and everything. It's just different. Judy likes the blues. Then on Adventures of the Shuffle Kings, they cut it for a third time. And it's a funk song. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't you say funk? Yeah. It's, and it's, and which is my favorite track. I mean, it's a version of, the, of that song. That's my favorite. It's just it's a great sounding tune. But this is one of those that he's changed over the years. For several years, he, he didn't do it, uh, but he brought it back, I think maybe when Cody Norman came back in, and especially when Buddy started playing again. Uh, we've been, and I just, I love the tune. It's, it's a shuffle. It's a great tune. And he, he wrote from personal experiences, and this was written about what he used to call his dark ages. And it was about a place in Dallas, I assume, Sun Rexall, where the people would, yeah. <laughs> Someone else has heard of that. <laughs> Again, like I said before, I'm from Louisiana. I'm naive. I I don't drink. I don't smoke. I've never done. You ain't from well, <laughs> oh, trust me, I am. My name is I'm, Thibodeau, and I have webbed toes. I don't drink or smoke. Never did. I call myself a musician somewhat, so it's. I guess I'm one of those anomalies, but so it's. He wrote it about what he called his, his dark ages, about Sun Rex Hall, where he'd go to get the uh, stuff he wasn't supposed to be going to get. And uh, once he cleaned up, he went back years later to check it out to see how it was. What's, what is he missing? And he's, his story was it was the same people doing the same thing, the same stuff they, they weren't supposed to be doing. And he wrote this song about it, put it on his first album. It's morphed several different times into several different versions and we're gonna try it now I guess. <coughs> Thank you. 
Men in drugstore blues won't let me be I'm a black light preacher gone mad Seem like a man could put it away The mystery that made him turn bad Well, 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 your sons and your daughters got religion again the Truth done set them free But your mamas and your papas got a lot to learn I hope they can learn it from me it was the same old business, same old smell Room full of people all going to hell I don't know why I miss it like I do, but I do Hell yes I do I did mention that I'm not a guitar player, right? <laughs> you know, this is no secret that Bugs was my favorite guitar player. Like Buddy said, he he was just an amazing person. As a guitar player, as coming up, as I was coming up, him taking me like he did uh, allow me to. I mean, there's millions of guitar players out better than me. It's, I guess I knew the songs. I don't know, or I, I just, maybe I wasn't a horrible person, I'm not sure, but he was kind enough to to take me around, and I look at him as, you know, a friend, a, a band leader, well, a friend first, a, a hero second, a band leader third, but he was he was my mentor. I looked at him, off stage, he was my friend, on stage, in the music realm, he, he was my mentor. I looked up to him, I want, I want you could tell, I've... I've stolen a couple of licks from him. And I think this, the relationship that he and I had was kind of, and we've talked, he and I have talked about this a little bit. It was kind of the same relationship as uh, he and Freddie King. I, I'm sure most of y'all have probably heard Freddie King. Tore down, going down, hideaway, you know, just monster guy. And it, Bugs would always tell these stories. And uh, Bugs wasn't a tall guy, five, seven, maybe. maybe. <laughs> And Freddie King was six five, six six, something like that. And so Bugs would always say when, and he toured around with Freddie, uh, when he would go play with him, be on stage together, that <laughs> he'd keep a box. So Freddie would come out and play his deal. Well, Bugs would go stand on that box, so they'd be the same height. <laughs> love that, love that. And it, you know, they just. It was one of those deals. Uh, Bugs was playing with uh, with Nit Singer, I believe, and uh, Nit Singer and uh, Freddie King were managed by Shoko. And Freddie King stopped Bugs in the hallway and said, "Dude, start your own band. You know, get out there and do." It. And that's what he did. Uh, he started his own band and he became so he became Bugs Henderson. He was no longer the guitar player. He was the act then. So he, he looked at Freddie as a mentor. I don't know how true this is or not, but he would always say that he played more poker with Freddie King than than music, which knowing Bugs is probably true. I, <laughs> that, that dude, he, 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 liked, he liked his games. And so he, he played a lot of poker with Freddie King, and uh, Freddie came up with this game to take people out of, out of their money and he did that <laughs> i believe it worked on on, on freddie's behalf and uh, bugs is you know I'm, I'm the biggest zz top fan in the world and so bugs would tell me about their they weren't poker games they were prayer meetings and <laughs> bugs would tell me about these games where frank beard the drummer from zz top would come and sit in and um it, they they did a they've had some games and i don't know how many times but i know at least once uh Bugs and Freddie King and Eric Clapton, they were all, they, they did a game together. Bugs' wife at the time, Buddy and Rose's mom, uh, Duchess, who, you know, I've only met her once, I believe, at Poor David's Pub. Uh, I'd only met her once. Uh, Sweet Lad requested a song, and it was off of his first album, Giggle Bush Boogie. And he, they didn't do it, and he's like, ah, 
I, I know it, but these guys don't. And she came up and said, oh, what song was it? And I said, it was Giggle Bush Boogie. She said, oh, I love that. So she seemed like the sweetest lady. They had a, um, a poker game with Freddie King, Eric Clapton, Bugs, and, and Duchess. And Duchess won the pot, I believe is how, this, how the story went. And she won the whole thing with whatever her hand was. And in in his little music room upstairs at, at his house, Bugs' house, it's called the Loud Room, there's a, a, a frame of a card hand. And what it is is, is Duchess's hand that she won against Freddie King with. And she framed it. And whatever cards were down is down in the frame, and whatever cards were up was is up, framed. And Bugs never knew what the hand was, is what he told me. I don't know if 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 you heard different, but he had told me that he never he never looked, he never never asked her, never looked. He went not knowing what that hand was, and I thought that was so cool. Every time I, I go into the loud room, I think, man, that's the hand that beat Clapton. How cool is that? <laughs> cool is that and, and they did a lot of uh, a lot of playing together it, it's just the thing about bugs is you know he's i think i heard jimmy wallace maybe put it he's he's the most famous unfamous person out there he's my guitar hero everyone else's household name guitar heroes would watch bugs in awe and that's what i liked you know i, I thought of Bugs. he was mine no one else knew about him. I'd go see him. He's mine. I, I'm stealing all those licks. I can sound just like him. No one would know the difference. When we would play in a, when we would play his songs at the house at uh, back in Lake Charles, at another friend of mine, I, I, I told him, "Look, you know, no one knows who Bugs Henderson is. I can tell him I wrote all these songs." And my friend said, "You can tell him you're Bugs Henderson. Uh, no one back in Louisiana knows the difference." So you know, he's my guitar hero. So you have Clapton. Bugs didn't look at Clapton as a guitar. He, they were contemporaries. You know, Clapton was successful. He had all the... He played with... I mean, did some great stuff. Crossroads, Outside Woman Blues, God, I love that song. Sunshine of Your Love. I mean, he did some amazing stuff. Skill-wise, I like Bugs better. I mean, he just... <laughs> No offense, he's just my style. I like that better. In, in Bugs' house, there's a great picture of... Bugs on stage. In the middle is Freddie King, but off to the side is Eric Clapton. <laughs> he he came in. I don't even know what club that was in the seventies. Bugs had long hair, blue jean jacket, and glasses with a goatee, and they were all playing the Gibson three forty fives. And of course, Clapton had his Strat. So this was probably in the seventies. But it's just a great shot of Bugs and Freddie King and Eric Clapton. And when I look at it, I don't think, wow, you know, Bugs got to play with Clapton. I think, what was Clapton think? He got to play with Bugs. How cool is that? You know, what would he be thinking? But so they had this song that Freddie King wrote, and oh, that Freddie King wrote, is that Bugs wrote about Freddie King's card game. And he would always, when we'd play it on stage, always preface the song by saying, if you don't know anything about cards, go outside for three, four minutes because the song is basically the rules of the, of the card game. But funny for me, again, I don't know anything about cards. I, I don't know anything about poker. I, I don't know how to play solitaire. I don't know how to play go fish. So me being on stage with that song, that the first couple of times we would do it, I would joke. I'd act like shrug my shoulders and take my guitar off because I don't know anything about poker. But this is about that card game. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 
Joker's wild. Low hold wild. Trey's wild too. Deuce and Lucy. That's the name of the boogeyman's game. some licks from some of his other songs that just happened to fit. 
<laughs> Some of them probably didn't fit, but just it's kind of like the I don't know what you call those little toys when you're kids that have the the little different pegs with the round and the triangle. I was trying to put the triangle and the round thing on some of those riffs. So. But the, uh, one of the cool things about that uh, is uh, the line is, watch out, you will get punked. I even saw him take Grand Funk. Uh, if, if you listen to, uh, we're an American band, Grand Funk Railroad. One of the lyrics is, uh, up all night with Freddie King, something, something, some poker is his thing. What they're talking about is, Freddie, they played poker with Freddie this game, and Freddie took all their money. So, of course, the Bugs put that line in there, which I just thought is, was great. Uh, he can't sing it, but I can play it. Uh, oh, I'm not going to sing that. No, 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 no. I, I'll get three words out, and I'll be just like a titty baby. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, 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 uh, oh no, no I, I will I will break down crying I, <laughs> I will have to turn in my man card it's just uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I know all the words memorized oh really you want to come up and do it You yeah. come on yeah. yes ma'am yeah. I'm, I'm making this clear I might not have this song memorized Rose Henderson everyone Great song, yeah. I hope this is my key. She could see it in his eyes. He looked so far away. He said, Honey, listen to me. I hope you realize. I'm still your best friend, that's right. <laughs> Tell me, yeah. How it feels. Is that right? Now I don't know the next verse. <laughs> Come on, buddy. So Poured out her heart one day and told her of his dreams. A dream he'd had for years. I'll help you find the way. To be a kid again And the words Fell through his tears Right through his tears Someday I've got to be a cowboy You and me Riding across the plains Someday when we can take some time out I'll live my cowboy dreams Said it hard. hard to be a man <laughs> Thank you <laughs> When there's so much I've been one since I was a little boy, help me find the way. What is it? I can hear you. Words. I'm not sure. <laughs> Fell through his tears. <laughs> right through his tears. He'd be shaking his head at me right now. He said, Someday he's gonna be a cowboy. You and me riding across the plains. Someday, when we can take some time out, he'll live his cowboy dreams. Hey! I don't know that solo. Uh, what's he do here? <laughs> And you, you thought Amber. we knew this song. Thank God for you, Brandon. <laughs> to the chorus. You want to play this, Amber? Please, God. <laughs> Someday I've got to be a cowboy. You and me 
Riding across the plains Someday When we can take some time out I'll live my cowboy dreams One more time yeah. Someday I've got to be a cowboy You and me Riding across the plains Time out. We'll live my cowboy dreams. Hey, hey. Happy trails. Happy trails. Awesome, Rose. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was great. Any other questions? Screw the questions. Oh, I don't know the lyrics. Plus, my, my mother wouldn't be happy with me if I sang it. I'm sure once Randy gets this on the internet, she's going to be the first one to go listen to this, and she doesn't want to hear her little boy singing, I want that mf -er. But I, I, I don't know the lyrics to it. I, God, we hadn't played. I think the last time we played that tune was here, and it was a while. Did, did you? Okay. Oh, Jesus. He said yeah, questions, uh, not requests. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. No, I can't sing that. That's... You know, you know what? It's, it's funny. Um, no, no, that's okay. Uh, he wrote this song about Billy Joe Shaver, and it's, Why Can't I Write Like Billy Joe? God, what are the... Uh, someone help me with, like, the first verse. Yeah, the, why can't I write like Billy Joe? I I, yeah, I, know. Uh, I know all the same words he knows. Um, <laughs> we've, oh God, I can't remember. But the funny thing about that is <laughs> after he got sick, it hit me. Why can't I play like Bugs Henderson? So I took that song and every, I took the the chords and everything and changed all the why can't I write like Billy Joe to why can't I play like Bugs Henderson? Why can't I play like Bugs Henderson? I know all the same licks he knows. We've played all the same places. We can make all the same faces. Why can't I play like Bugs Henderson? I, I never, never got to send it to him. So. Favorite thing that he ever taught me? Wow. Yeah. It's okay to fake it. It really is. Uh, there was... Uh, the hardest thing that I know how to play I, as a guitar player is uh, a song called Jitterbugs. It's instrumental. It's a fast C shuffle. It's a suff shuffle in C. He loves shuffling C's, and he was good at it. And it, there was this bit in the song where they would play at the, the, rather, the regular... Play that, that tempo. Then he had stopped the song. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, there's something wrong with the song. What's the problem? The song is too damn slow. So he'd count it off. <laughs> two, three, one, two, three. And just it was cruising. So uh, drummer takes a solo, bass player takes a solo. Well, at the end, the band stops. And the cool thing about Bugs, as far as good... Now, I'm, for those of you that don't play guitar, go smoke a cigarette, because this is going to be boring to you. <laughs> But those of you that do, you know, you have different type of guitar players. There's, uh, I, I haven't heard Curtis yet, but I talked to him out front. I, I'm sure he's great. We have a mutual friend in Kirby Kelly, who is a, a slide player. And just, 
I mean, just amazing slide player. So there's that style of playing. You tune your guitar to a chord. And some people do it in open. Warren Haynes does it in open tuning. I mean, in standard tuning. But tune your guitar to a chord, play slide. Kirby's great. Sonny Landreth. Derek Trucks. Those are great players. Then you have players like me who do the single string stuff. You know, that's one note person. That was not hard. That's, yeah, I wouldn't be wooing that. It was hard. <laughs> I could show you in about three minutes how to do that. That was not. That was not. So there's these single string players that, you know, though Freddie King or uh, Albert King with the Stevie Ray Vaughan standard. That you know they do all that stuff. But what Bugs would do, and some players do this, is they'd play a solo using just chords. It's not playing a scale or playing licks. They're doing chords. In Jitterba, and I know I'm going off in tangents, I'm, I'm somewhat ADD, so please bear with me. <laughs> What's that? I'm stupid? Oh. <laughs> uh, so there's this deal in Jitterbugs when, you know, they've already got the fast part, so there's a stop. And the core, and I'm going to, like I said, this is one of the things Bugs would always tell me is, hello, Mary Lou. Ricky Nelson, that's his favorite solo of all times. With James Burton, he became friends with James Burton. That's his favorite solo. He said he worked on that continuously. He never stopped working on it. He never felt he had it right. Still, exactly. And that's how I am about this, I call it the Jitterbugs Breakdown. It's basically uh, the band stops and he does this. And I'll do it slowly. And <laughs> and I will mess this up, but it's, it's a work in progress. So he's in C, so it's... And so, and the band would come back in. But the tempo he does it at is, uh, oh Jesus, uh, please forgive me. So he would do that. So too damn, too damn slow. Thank you very much. I agree with that. So somehow I figured that stuff out. And I had a little help, but that's kind of hard for me, at least. I mean, I'm sure a lot of y'all can do that. I can't remember how I used to do it, but I did it wrong for years. I would do just like a Something like that, just on two strings. He, he played a gig in, it was in Houston at Dan Electro's. That was one of the times before I was in the band, but he let me sit in with him. And I asked him, I, I said, how do you do that thing in Jitterbugs? And I did my fake thing, and he said, no, 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 this is how you do it. And he, he showed me, and I don't, this is a part of a C, we're in C, so this is a, uh, a funny C ninth chord. It's uh, he, he called it the Freddie King chord because Freddie King in Hideaway, I don't know if... Uh, those of y'all that heard Hideaway, there's a, a breakdown where Freddie King goes. So the Freddie King chord is what he called it. It's a ninth chord. So he goes, it's in C. And... He, well, ADD, I'm sorry. The C9, then he does a, a C diminished, then he does, I don't know, the same, like, he didn't even know the name of the chord. He said it looks like a, a D minor 7, but it's, he didn't know what it's called. Then this other one that he didn't know the name of the chord, it's called a, like a, a A7 sharp 9. So you have the, so you have those, those chords that I was doing.
what I was just playing the basically the top of the melody, which is like the first the the top two strings. It was the the melody instead of instead of going. I was whatever the. So I was doing it wrong, and so I said, hey, "What are you doing there?" Because I've seen him do it, and he's doing chords, and I know I'm not doing chords there. So what are you doing? And he said, and he showed that to me. I said, oh, "Okay, okay, that's cool." You know, and this wasn't the story where he told me that. Faking it. <laughs> I'm lying. I just want to play that for y'all to show. No, the, the, the faking it. The, boy, huh? That's when my, because my hearing's going. He couldn't hear anything. The most important thing he showed me, uh, that was the wrong one. He would play fast. When you're a guitar player and you pick up a guitar, what do you want to do? You want to play fast. That's great. And I think it was Steve Brooks who did the, this is my sound check song, which is, in, I'm totally stealing that. That's it. I'm, that was awesome. Oh, uh, there you are. Yeah. Dude, if I make money off of it, I'll send you a check. But that, that was great. But so, but as a guitar player, I want to play fast. So, you know, you go see Bugs. You, and I can't play fast, but whatever, whatever they're doing. You Van Halen with all the, all that stupid stuff. Uh, but you would watch Bugs on the single string licks. And he, what he's told me is people has told him he holds his pick wrong, incorrectly. Okay, I'm not going to tell him that. This sounds right to me. <laughs> so he, he's holding his, he holds his pick wrong, and the way his hand is on the bridge, I, I can't do it, but he'll do the, where all that's moving, I'm sorry, I'm getting away from the mic here. All that's moving is his finger and his thumb, and his hand doesn't leave. It's just making, kind of making a circle. And I do it like a, like a, a wrist action here, like... Which uh, you normally hide behind a whole lot of distortion. It sounds so much cleaner then. But that I get my, my whole wrist, and he does the, the deal. I had a lesson at his house one time, and Rose was there. And I'm going to tell a story about Rose. She was younger. I had, uh, and, and I still have it. It was before I bought this. This, this was Bugs' guitar. It, on the, uh, he has a cover... Uh, an album called 410 Strikes Again, where he has the uh, the old beat-up Fender Bassman leaning backwards and a purple guitar hanging over it. This was that this was that purple guitar, but I guess at the time, Paul wasn't using the top-notch paints and the blue faded out. So, I mean, this this is, it even says Custom Built for Bugs Henderson on the back. And I cherish this. I love this guitar with all my heart. But before I had this, I had a... And I, I still I keep saying had I have a Gibson Les Paul gold top and that was my number one for years. So I, you know, I was uh, friends with Bugs, but I found out he gave a lesson to somebody. It's like, how do I get a lesson? And he said, "You pay me, I do anything." So <laughs> I brought some money and I took a lesson at their houses uh, when y'all lived in Garland. And Rose was much younger then, and I had the gold top Les Paul, and she came in the room to tell her bye or whatever, and she started freaking out because, and I don't even know the guy's name, the guitar player from Hanson. Umbach. <laughs> Zach, is that his name? Oh, that's that's the same guitar as Zach. Oh my, and she, that was a long time ago. And she started drooling. I, I moved out. I thought she was going to just attack me for that guitar because she must have thought I took that from Zach with Hanson. Yeah. And so I was messing with Bugs, you know, Guitar Center has these, and it was just around Christmas time. And he was getting mad. But ADD, he lets me take a lesson, so I'm, I'm taking a lesson with him. And I've been watching him for years. Been friends, but this time we were friends. I mean, I'm at his, I spent the night at his house. Now, it was on his couch. And when I woke up, his Clancy was in my face whenever I woke up. Yeah. Sure yeah, that's dog. <laughs> Um, I apologize. I figure everybody knows everything about Bugs' life. They know his pet's names. But Clancy, uh, their dog, was like in my face when I woke up. So, I mean, we were friends at the time, but uh, 
wasn't in the band. So I I, I was taking the, taking the lesson because I wasn't going to pass that up. And I had a legal pad, one of those yellow legal pads of stuff just written out. This I want to learn this. I mean, I'd been listening to CDs, listening to cameras stuffed in purses, still in legs. I've been, I was like, how do we, how does he really do this? So I have this list, so about halfway down is fast string picking. And it's that, uh, all that stuff. And so he's like, I don't know how I do that. I just pick up the pick and I just start doing it. He said, I've never had anyone ask me that. So he's sitting there, he's doing whatever he's doing. And silly me, I'm around behind him looking over his shoulder as he's trying to figure that out and you know i'm like okay well then that's that's going to be your deal that's just how you do that and and i told him that's great but i don't do it that way i fake it and he looked at me with those steel blue eyes he looked at me son there's nothing wrong with faking it (laughs) so that's that's the (laughs) yes (laughs) I Along I was up here with Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> How much did I pay for the lesson? He charged $100 an hour. Is that what so I said, well, I guess I'll just have to do two hours in. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and the licks and the, the guitar work, I, I learned most of my guitar playing, learning his licks, but him not showing me watching the video, watching him, learning it on my own. But him saying there's nothing wrong with faking it. But it was it was more than that. It was attitude. How I mean playing in the band with them, it improved my playing. It's I learned a lot more about dynamics cuz I was a I'm a lead player whenever we do our band, I'm the guitar player. And, you know, Not anymore. yeah. It's I don't play guitar. You know, whatever knobs are on my guitars, well, it goes to, you know, like uh, Nigel from uh, Bono Tab. It, it goes to 11. You know, all these knobs go to 10, so I put them on 10. But playing with him, turn, going from a lead player to a, a rhythm player, I, I learned dynamics, but I, I learned space. So I, I learned more about attitude and... and uh, <laughs> And, and 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 more about the more about attitude and how to a- approach playing live and it's not a, I thought when, before I started playing with Bugs I had one impression of them when I got finished I had a different impression of them equally good I thought before I thought he was a perfectionist I thought every lick that he did was planned out I thought every little stop that Buddy would do on the drums was planned out I thought every little thing that it's not. The dude's just flying by the seat of his pants. It, some songs have structured solos, and sometimes he'll commit to those structures. Most of the time, it's in his head. I mean, yeah, he just been doing it. I mean, he, he played professionally for over 50 years. I mean, I'm not even 40. He's been playing guitar longer than I've been alive. And it was just it was second nature to that guy. And so... I learned, okay, it's not about being, it's not about perfectionism. It's about feeling the the music, being, playing the right lick at the right time. Now, I haven't, I understand that. I haven't mastered that yet, but I understand it. And that's, from from here on out, that's where I'm going to go with it. I'm going to still learn his licks. I, I haven't finished. He's, the dude was a, had the, had an encyclopedic knowledge of the guitar. There's not a lick that he, that he didn't know, which was great. But from now on, it's going to be, you know, trying to play the right notes. Not to play the wrong notes is what I'm going to try to do. You know, that's that's kind of like people taking Hendrix songs and changing them. You don't change Hendrix songs. It's, you don't take bugs to a new place. But I, under, I understand. Take what I've learned from him and ex- expand on it. But I'd be happy just being a... The Bugs clone. <laughs> we can do another song. Uh, Something in need. The uh, this song means a lot to me. It is the first song I ever played with them, 
It was at his uh, 60th birthday party, and his wife, it was a big surprise party. His wife said, bring a guitar. Uh, this might be it. You can. So we got up on stage, and we played this song. It was the last song of the night. I loved it, and it, I, I knew it so well that I played his solo. Whenever, whenever he, you know, when you're playing with him, he gives you the look. When he wants you to take this, that's your look to take solo. So we were playing, and he gave me the look. Well, I was so freaked out playing on stage with Bugs, I ended up playing his solo <laughs> note for note. And you can see it on the video, him listening to me, and then starts smiling. <laughs> then he looks up and goes, he ripped my solo. <laughs> And I had just bought this guitar, and we were, when we were done, he looked at me and said, I think I left some licks in that guitar. Since I've been in the band, we've played this song, and uh, his wife, Patty, would always tell me, make him mad. Get up there and make him mad. Do his stuff. And what it was is to push him, because he would get in that rut where, okay, he was just on autopilot. So here I am, play his solo, and he's like, so he had to think. And the, the last gig we played at if I can get through this. The last gig we played in uh, Ben Wheeler, we did this tune. And, of course, it's, and I'll do the solo. I'll, I'll do the, the, the verse that I do. It is all the open string stuff. And I, I did it, and he laughed. And whenever my solo was over, he looked at me. He's like, do it again. And we did that solo in unison, it, meaning we did it, both of us played that same that same solo. And so, you know, the first time and the last time. Oh, and it's called Heartbreak Gum. Well, I, I don't have time for the story, and it's probably, it's a nasty story, <laughs> what this song really means. Thank <laughs> you. 
costs that much And it can easily be replaced Honey, you can look all over for it It's staring you Right around here Yeah Damon, huh? Anybody got a squeegee? <laughs> 